All right, hey guys, and welcome to another Quick Tips Blender tutorial, part of the Quick Tips series on my channel. So today we're going to go over some basic rendering stuff and how to speed up your renders and make them a little bit faster. So first of all, we're going to talk about rendering. Basically, rendering is when you take an object in the 3D viewport and you render it out from a camera, as I'm sure you are pro most likely aware of. And rendering is really great. I mean, it's basically how we get our models into the picture or, you know, photographic scene. And um, there's a lot of presets here, and you're looking at this rendering and you're saying, wow, Blender is complicated. And yeah, it is, but I can walk you through some basic stuff that'll make your renders faster, because you don't always want to be rendering full-size HD photos when you're just doing preview renders and tweaking certain features within your scene to get it just right. So first we're going to look over here at the layers, actually. And layers is a basic way of Blender rendering out all the different parts of a scene, like specular passes, and diffuse passes, and normal passes, mist passes, color passes, and a bunch of other things, reflected and reflected light, ambient occlusion, and shadows, and emit values, and all sorts of things, and Z values as well, which is basically the depth from a camera. And there are a bunch of different things here, and what I'm going to tell you is right now that really all you need to know as a basic Blender user, you will most likely not need to use any of these layers. These are more for compositing aspects and have nothing to do with the actual render itself unless you're into the compositing scene, and then which it does had quite a lot to do with it. But all I can tell you is clicking these will slow down your render times quite a bit. Um, well, not quite a bit, but a little bit because it's got to render out that individual layer as well as the final scene, which takes not very much processing power, but it takes a little bit more than it would normally if you just had these two selected, because these two do, in fact, have to be selected. Well, the Z value doesn't have to be selected, but I would recommend having it on there because that's the quick one that most people will use in the compositor. Next, we're going to look at dimensions here, and let me just close all these out so we don't get distracted or anything. So dimensions. Dimensions is a big one, too, because uh, the larger picture you're rendering, the more detail Blender has to render for you. So as you see, this is the standard HD format for video and pictures, and right now it's at 50, which means it renders at half of these sizes. As you go down, the renders take quicker, or will be quicker and quicker, and as you go up, the renders will take longer and longer. But it also decreases or increases the size of a picture, so let's just leave that back at 50. And then these also things are only things you need to know for video. Um, more frames a second means that it basically you want to be careful with using this because if you animate a project in 24 frames and then you decide you want to switch over to a 30 frame video, you suddenly have an animation conflict where your animations actually end up being different amount of times compared to other things that may be constraint based. So that's something you should watch out for. Time remapping, I'm not going to get into this. Frame steps, I'm not going to get into that. Aspect ratio is basically just the ratio at which this is displayed to this. Um, you can look those up on Wikipedia. It's a really uh, basic video term. Next, we're going to look at anti-aliasing. And if you're doing quick preview renders, you usually want to just turn this off because turning this off, basically anti-aliasing is defining this edge of the cube or any edge of anything from these basic grid or anything else behind it. And <coughs> excuse me, the more anti-aliasing you have, the better things will be defined. But for preview renders, you don't really necessarily need it to be defined. Although if you do, turning these up will increase the amount, and turning this down will decrease the amount of time your render takes. So we'll just turn that off. And then also, I'll quickly go over this. This is just a bunch of different filters. The filters will slightly change how your anti-aliasing works, although overall in an image, you usually will not notice a difference unless you're doing fine-tuned editing. Next, we're going to look at sampled motion blur. And this in Blender is a neat feature, although it doesn't always work exactly how you would think it would. It basically makes um, motion blur directly in the render instead of doing it through the compositor, which is a little bit more complicated. And this is great for actually previewing, although, once again, it does slow your times down a lot because instead of rendering one frame, if I'm doing three samples, it will render one frame on either side of the current frame I'm on to make motion blur. And for still images, you really don't need motion blur. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a little sick and a little bit of cold right now, but that's completely fine. Next, we're going to go down to shading. Turning all of these off will, of course, make your render super fast, but it will also get rid of texture, shadows, subsurface scattering, environment lighting, and then ray tracing and all sorts of things. Now we have this really cool thing over here. This is alpha. And this is really sweet because this can basically make you PNG alpha images instead of having the sky as the background. So if you were putting something else onto a green screen, you'd want pre-multiplied instead, or straight alpha. <coughs> Ooh, sorry. And next, we're going to go down to performance. 
Auto detect is usually what you want to keep threads on. If you want fixed, you can fix your Blender to render only on one thread, although auto detect will render on all your threads and renders will be quite a bit faster, although they will take up a bit more of RAM on your CPU. So if you're trying to do multiple tasks, say rendering a video in Camtasia, you know, using Blender, opening Spotify with Minecraft and all sorts of other things open, you will quickly run into problems where you won't have enough RAM. So by detaining it to one thread, you're significantly decreasing the amount of memory, memory Blender has act to it, access to at once and therefore decreases or increases the amount of time your renders take but also decreases the amount of uh of ram you're using from blender itself and then we're going to look at tiles here and tiles are great because with tiles and preview render if you only want to see part of a render you can increase these tiles because these tiles are basically how many parts Blender is divided into. And the more tiles you have, the more parts the image is divided into, which generally, this is actually a myth that increasing tiles makes Blender's render faster. That's not actually true, but you can view more of a certain part of an image faster if it's uh, with smaller tiles. The acceleration structure, you don't want to usually worry about too much. Auto will, al will almost always detect the best acceleration structure. Although, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Octree is actually a best one if you're not, if you don't want to use this, just because the resolution you can increase and this will have to slow down quite a bit, but it also divides your render up into smaller bits so you can get, um, not more accurate renders, but quicker renders in certain parts. This is once again goes along with increasing tiles. And then memory, you want to save buffers, will slow down your time. Free image, um, free image texture will uh, take any textures that aren't actually included within the 3D viewport when you're rendering and it will just not put them in the memory because normally when Blender renders it puts everything that's in your scene, every material, every texture, regardless of whether or not it's used, into the memory before it renders things out. This is a technique designed to make the renders faster but sometimes when you're not using a current texture at the moment it can make the renders quite a bit slower. Then of course free unused nodes is another thing that we won't really get into because once again it's not a big deal. The performance tab is usually a pretty good one to leave alone, although yes it can help. Um, local coordinates I'm not actually sure about anyway, so we'll just keep moving on. Post processing. These ones are important if you don't want to apply effects um, that you have in the compositor to the actual render. And if you're wondering how to do this, you now know. You simply uncheck this one and then you also uncheck this. The sequencer is the video sequencer, which I'll hop over to real quick just to show you. Video sequence editor here. If you have something in here, it will not render your scene. It will only render what's in the sequencer, which can usually be a black screen if you're not on a certain frame. So you want to be careful with that. So we'll just leave these unchecked and dither um, is just the amount of noise you use when you break up banding, which basically it says right there. Um, banding is a thing that you won't usually see in your images unless you're using really low quality image files, so you're not going to worry about that. Fields is also basically a, just a way to do interlaced pictures. Once again, we don't have to worry about that. Now, Edge. Edge is a very cool thing, and I'm going to just show you all a really quick render. Edge basically takes the edges of something, and if it has a, the high enough threshold value, it draws a line around them. So I'm going to render this out really quickly. And oh, of course, you can't see this because I've changed the shading over to pre-multiplied. Let's change this back to sky and render this out. So you see it has a kind of cartoon drawn edge look, and if you increase the threshold, these lines will also increase their size and thickness, and they'll also you'll start to see it along these edges that are actually in the cube itself. If we increase it all the way to zero, you won't be able to see it hardly at all. But we're going to keep going here, so we'll go back to the 3D viewport. And you can look at stamp. Now stamp is just a thing that basically, I've, I'll show you really quickly, you have all these things here, and it basically just puts them into your image. So we'll let the image finish, and then it just puts all these stamps here. This is good for quick test images if you're sending them to a client, or just if you wanted to quick test and you know exactly where this frame was, so if you need it as a reference image for later, you can go back and look at that. Now output. Output is important because it's where your file will be put. And this is in my temp, which, oh god, is filled with just tons of things. And I could put it into my music if I wanted to. And basically, this is just how you how it will render out stuff and save. JPEGs, PNGs, uh, open EXRs, and then all sorts of movie files. And then, of course, you change the compression here and whether or not it has alpha channel. The alpha channel is very important if you end up doing this with the sky and you change pre-multiplied. You need to save a PNG with RGBA or I think with TIFF images as well. Um, this does not work with JPEGs. You'll see it only has bl black and white or RBG here. And then, of course, your final thing. And we're not going to get into this too much because this does usually not apply to very many people at all. Um, baking is when you basically do bits of an image beforehand to cut down your rendering time. And this can help, but that's another tutorial within itself. All right, guys, so that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, leave a rating and comment if you enjoyed, and uh, subscribe too. Thanks. Bye.